tragedy of the commons is an economic hypothesis that was proposed by ecologist Garrett Hardin in 1968. Hardin argued that when a resource is open to the public, rational individuals will act in their best self-interest and use the resource as much as possible to maximize their personal gain, even at the demise of the rest of the community. He illustrated this point by telling the story of a common pasture in a village that people would bring their cows to graze upon. Any rational person would bring as many cows as possible to graze on the pasture, maximizing the amount of meat and milk they can produce to sell, and thus maximizing their profit. However, when everyone in the village has the same mindset, without regulation, the pasture will inevitably become overgrazed and unusable. Therefore, even when attempting to act rationally, humans will exploit their resources and eventually deplete the common resource. To solve the dilemma of the tragedy of the commons, Hardin suggested that government regulation be enacted. By controlling the common resources, the government would be able to ensure that no one abuses the collected materials. Another suggested solution is the privatization of ownership for a resource. When someone is responsible for their own resource, they will be more concerned with the long-term effects of overuse. Hardin applies this concept to the issue of overpopulation. He argues that the earth is like the pasture in the village, and we humans are the greedy herdsmen taking advantage of the finite resources, such as oceans and atmosphere. The earth, just as any ecosystem, has a caring capacity. Hardin warned that we were dangerously close to reaching it, which would lead to the unavoidable breakdown of society. I teach uh, Econ 102 and there's a number of situations that I gave quick examples of during class. Um, for example, littering. You could say, well, oh, I'm just one person, this is just one small piece of trash, if I throw it on the ground it's no big deal, but if lots of people litter then um, you're going to have a big mess to clean up. Uh, water usage is another example. There's a lot of places specifically in you know California or Nevada that have really severe droughts right now so if there's a water usage ban or a water restriction in effect one person says oh it's no big deal if I water my lawn or I use too much water but if everyone does that then the water levels will have significant levels of, of depletion and we've talked about it in in terms of just people generally having an attitude of I'm one person so my actions don't make a difference but if everyone thinks that way and everyone acts based on that logic then hundreds of people acting in a certain way will have a noticeable difference and that's mm -hmm. of course the tragedy because something gets used up or something gets depleted or something gets ruined. Another quick example we talked about was uh, poaching or over hunting or over fishing people people taking beyond what they're supposed to take but in the last century the planet's temperature has risen unusually fast about 1.2 to 1.4 degrees Fahrenheit scientists believe it's human activity that's driving the temperatures up a process known as global warming Ever since the Industrial Revolution began, factories, power plants, and eventually cars have burned fossil fuels such as oil and coal, releasing huge amounts of carbon dioxide and other gases into the atmosphere. These greenhouse gases trap heat near the Earth through a naturally occurring process called the greenhouse effect. The greenhouse effect begins with the sun and the energy it radiates to the Earth. The Earth and the atmosphere absorb some of this energy, while the rest is radiated back into space. Naturally occurring gases in the atmosphere trap some of this energy and reflect it back, warming the Earth. Scientists now believe that the greenhouse effect is being intensified by the extra greenhouse gases that humans have released. Evidence for global warming includes a recent string of very warm years. Scientists report that 1998 was the warmest year in measured history, with 2005 coming in second. Generally speaking, yes. Um, the tragedy of the commons is an example of a market failure. So Adam Smith, sometimes called the father of, of modern economics, would generally be today considered laissez-faire, meaning keep the hands off. Um, no government intervention, no regulation, just let individual 
buyers and sellers and firms and consumers make their own decision. And the invisible hand refers to, even though that sounds chaotic, you know, lots of people making their own decisions, how could that work out? The invisible hand means it does work out, as if uh, an external force just, you know, pushed us in the right direction to have this nice market where people are buying or selling. And, you know, 99 times out of 100, uh, competition works, and markets work, and people and firms making their own decisions work. But the tragedy of the commons is an example of a market failure where your actions have a negative externality effect on other people. So even if you are very laissez-faire in terms of economic regulation, or if you're very libertarian in terms of political and economic leanings, the externalities is actually one case where you'd say, all right, government intervention might be warranted there because uh, one action by an individual does harm other people. And the general solution in that case is, how do you reduce the activity that harms other people? And the general, generally accepted solution would be to tax that behavior. So. Uh, or negatively incentivize it. So you pay fines or fees for pollution, for example. You could go to jail for poaching. So if you have activities that can have negative externalities or in the extreme case result in the tragedy of the commons, you have to punish, tax, or negatively incentivize those behaviors. So even in the market setting, people won't do those behaviors as much because the costs are now higher. The tragedy of the commons is evident in modern-day exploitation of resources. Overlogging and deforestation serve as examples of human exploitation of trees and plant resources. Overfishing shows human exploitation of fish populations, which leads to decreasing aquatic biodiversity. Pollution results in environmental damage and ecological disruption. And human depletion of fossil fuels results in global warming, air pollution, and other negative consequences. If these tragedies continue, the future of our planet and future generations are at risk. Understanding the tragedy of the commons is an effective strategy to become more environmentally conscious and ensure the well-being of our future.